Lissa Productions. So today we're going to talk about how we're going to set up an emitter follower circuit to get it to function like we talked about in the last lecture. Basically, AC signal, output is a copy of the input, large input impedance, small output impedance. And the key thing is to bias this. And biasing this, we need the collector voltage bigger than the base voltage. And when we do that, the emitter voltage will be a diode drop below the base voltage. We're going to assume that we have a single DC power supply. I'm going to call it VCC. And I'm just going to hook VCC directly to the collector. So VC is going to be equal to VCC. The next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to take a fraction of this voltage and put it into the base. The easiest way we know how to take a fraction is to set up a voltage divider. So we put some R1 and R2 there. We connect that to the base. So now we would get that the base voltage is just VCC times R2 for R1 plus R2. It's a fraction of that. And now we need to get the AC signals in and out of this. So we have some Vn of T, which we're going to put in here. And we'd like to connect that in there. And we'd actually like to, in some level, block the DC signal from going into the AC. And we're going to do that with a capacitor. So we'll put some capacitor C1 here. So C1 forms a high pass filter for the input. It doesn't let any DC go through. And we're going to do something similar on the output. We're going to run that through some capacitor C2 and take our output there. So AC in, AC out, and we've got this circuit here. Now we need to try to figure out how we're going to come up with values for R1, R2, and RE. So let's start by, let's just assume for number, sake of numbers that VCC is 12 volts, okay? And what we would like to do is we have an AC signal on both the input and the output. And that AC signal added to the input, we can't go above VCC. And on the output, we can't drop below zero. So there's some limits on what we can do. So if we look at voltage, voltage, there's VCC as a function of time. And we set some DC level, which we have yet to determine for the base. And the lowest the base can go is 0.65 volts, because the lowest the emitter can go is zero. So there's some other something else here, 0.65 volts. Whatever our AC signal coming in is, it has to be trapped between the 0.65 volts and the 12 volt VCC. So we might as well just try to center it in there. That would make the most sense. So if we try to center it, the base voltage will be this offset, 0.65 volts, plus 1 half the difference between 12 volts and 0.65 which is 11.35 volts over 2. That tells us that we want to put the base at 6.325 volts. And if we do that, the emitter voltage is going to be one diode drop below that. So it's going to be, get this right here, 5.675 volts. So that's what we'd like to do. So now the challenge is pick two resistors, R1 and R2, that will give us a divider that gives us, with 12 volt input, 6.325 volts output. So let's just go ahead and do that. It's pretty straightforward. We'll take this here. So let's just work right here. So what we have to have is this expression here. 6.325 volts has to be R2, R2 times 12 volts. And if we've got that, we can come up that R1 has to be 
0 0.897 times R2. So whatever R1 is, it's got to be about 90% of R2. So R2 is just slightly larger. That makes sense. It's slightly above halfway in the 12 volts. At this point, any pair of resistors that satisfies that are good. One thing to keep in mind, as this, this divider circuit acts as an input impedance to this. So it, the output impedance is related to that input impedance divided by 100, but if this gets too big, we could start hurting. So let's try to keep it small. So try to keep those resistors on the order of a kilo ohm or something. The output of this is half of that because they're about the same. So let's try to see if we choose R2 to be one kilo ohm, R1 is about 900 ohms. If we choose R2 to be 1.1 kilo ohms, R1 is about one kilo ohm. And this we pretty much have to go over and see what we have available to allow us to build this circuit. But presumably we can pick something in this range that are type kilo ohm type resistors here. Okay, so we've picked R1 and R2, that's reasonable. The next thing we need to do is we'd like to choose this resistor here, this RE. And that one we want to choose so that we don't burn up the transistor, meaning we don't exceed the maximum power. So we're basically worried about VCE and the current going through here, IE. And typically, you can look at ratings on these transistors. The ones we have are good up to a few hundred milliamps. We would maybe choose IE to be something like 10 milliamps. That should be very safe. We're not going to burn up the transistor. So in order to do that, we'll try to choose IE to be 10 milliamps. So let's look at what that means. IE is 10 milliamps. The emitter voltage, VE, is 5.675 volts. That just says RE is basically VE over IE equals 0.5675 kilo ohms. So it's about 600 ohms. So we want to choose RE about 560 ohms or so. And that's going to limit the current to about 10 milliamps. So that's very safe there. So now we've got values for R1, R2. So we have R1 about a kilo, each of these are about a kilo ohm, whatever we picked, and RE is about half that. That biases things correctly. Last thing we need to do is to decide what this capacitors are going to be. And as I said, they, they act like a high pass filter. High pass filter is a capacitor and then a resistor to ground. And we're worried about what the paths are to get to ground here. Clearly, that's one way to go to ground, so it just sees R2. It can also go through the transistor and see beta times RE, something very big. And one other very subtle point, but very important point with AC circuits, a DC level is also a ground for an AC circuit. So even though it's at a DC level of 12 volts, it functions as an AC ground. So that is an other path to get to ground. So what does that mean? You see one is coming in and it sees three resistors in parallel connected to ground. R1, R2, and beta times RE. So this is about a kilo ohm, this is about a kilo ohm, and this is 560 ohms times 100, this is about 56 kilo ohms. So those two guys pretty much win. This isn't going to matter. So the parallel combination, the equivalent, is approximately those two in parallel. It's about 500 ohms. So this capacitor sees basically 500 ohms to ground. We want to let through AC signal, so we could say, well, we'd like to transmit maybe the RC frequency at 20 hertz. That's the bottom of the audible range of frequencies. That means omega RC is about 125 seconds to the minus 1. So that's enough information for us to determine C1. R equivalent C1 
has to be 1 over 125 seconds to the minus 1. That's 500 ohms. There's C1. So we get C1 is approximately 16 microfarads. 16 microfarads with this, we have a cutoff frequency that's just audible there. What about the output side? Same sort of argument, except now what's the resistor? Well, it's whatever the load is. We'd like it to have roughly the same characteristic frequency, so R load times C2 has to be 1 over 125 seconds to the minus 1. Now, our load, that's a little tricky. There's no load in this circuit here. But if we go back and look at what we have, the output impedance of this circuit is basically the input here, these two in combination, 500 ohms, divided by beta. So it's about 5 ohms. So the output impedance here is about 5 ohms. We want the load to be large compared to 5 ohms. So we go to 10 times 5 ohms. That's 50 ohms for the R load. Put R load in, 50 ohms, same thing. C2, it's going to be 10 times bigger than this. C2 is about 160 microfarads. That now let us go through and choose components that will not burn out the transistor and you let us use a 12-volt supply to build this emitter follower.